Good evening, Lisa. Good evening, Andrew. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. Right. What have I got in my hand? You have got, well... Shall I hold it up? You have, in a second, yes. Yeah. It's it's Blue Peter's 60th birthday this week. It was happy, on Tuesday. So happy birthday, Blue Peter. Happy birthday to Blue Peter. And uh, so we thought we'd have a look at the book for the 50th anniversary, which was written by the lovely Richard Marsden. <laughs> there we go. Blue Peter. Hang on, let me zoom in. 50th anniversary. Where did we get this? Uh, I think we got it in town, didn't we? Did we? Yeah. I can't remember where we got it from. I can't remember where we got it from, but I think, yeah, I think we got it in town. I remember buying it... It was around Christmas, I think. And right. We went to town for the day. Original price, fourteen ninety nine. Yes, did I'm you not pay sure we paid fourteen ninety nine for it, but yes. I can't remember where we got it, but it's a it's a wonderful but book. Even at fourteen ninety nine, that's a yes, pretty that's good, a very good book because it's very in depth up bargain. to two thousand and eight. Yes, um, but Obviously you, things have changed, you just wanted to look think? at the last few pages because yes. they've done, uh, or rather, Richard's written a thing about famous faces mm -hmm. who've appeared on Blue Peter over the yes. years. So just to establish, what's your sort of period for watching um, it? Well, I'm a little bit too young to remember Peter Purvis and, mm. and Leslie Judd and, and John Noakes. My year is more, it's more the sort of early, late 70s, well, sort of early 80s, 1980. Mm. So it'd be Simon Groom, yeah. Peter Duncan, Sarah Green and Janet Ellis kind right. of era. Because, yeah, mm. I mean, I I sort of run from mid-70s to early 80s, yeah. I, I guess. So yeah. sort of, you know... Peter, John and, and Leslie are yes. my sort of core ones but mm -hmm. I do remember like sort of when Simon Groom and so on came yep. in so I remember sort of the, the transition sort of yes. period. Well, of, I mean, of could, that, I mean yeah. oh, you've got Christopher Wenner around there as well haven't you? Yeah there? that's and, right. Uh, yeah. That's um, thing. But yeah here's, 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 some, here's some I don't know whether I can hold the pictures up or not. 1973 John Pertwee brings in the Hoomobile. Yes and if you've ever seen the clip of the Hoomobile yeah. he doesn't really he, he's not really Giving his all, John Pertwee, is he? <laughs> he's a little bit, um, yeah, whatever. Well, I think he sort, of, he sort of decided to leave around this yeah. point, hasn't he? Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, he, he, I, I love the bit when he sort of zooms off. Yeah, and you hear him screech. The crowd, you hear the squeal of, <laughs> of brakes, of tires, the tires and brakes yeah. and things like because that. Because obviously, he's got to stop before he hits the wall or whatever. So, yeah. Uh, but there's a picture here. It says number two, former Beetle. Uh, Ringo Starr brought his groovy ultra modern designer table to the studio. John Noakes was suitably impressed. There's a table. Okay, oh, it's R Ringo Starr. Sh shall I? It's wait? a hairy Ringo Starr. Well, there's John Pertwee. Yeah. There we go. And there's Ringo, there's Ringo with his table. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but 1965. Actor Jack Warner, or mm. PC George Dixon, in the long-running BBC series Dixon Dog Green, switched studios to give viewers a closer look at Dixon's dog. See, that's because uh, the reason I realised I'd never seen Dixon's dog is because none of that exists. That's from yeah, so that's sort that's of mid sixties, where nothing but there, there exists. are a very few. The odd one or two, but there's six, none with Dixon's on, dog in. Not that I've seen. I'd remember though. Dixon's dog. Okay, hmm. uh, number four. Ex-dancer Leslie Judd copies the funky gibbon as mm -hmm. performed by Bill Oddie, Graham Garden, Tim Brooke Taylor, a.k.a. The Goodies. Graham's given it his all there. Well, let's have a look. Let's have a look at the pictures again. So there's, there's Dixon with his, with his dog and there's, there's The Goodies doing their stuff. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it, it's true that... Um, Graham always looks a bit embarrassed. When yeah, but he's, he's given it his all. He's, he's, when, I mean, he's got... And he's yes, dungarees. He's dungarees, yeah. Uh, you can tell who's the natural dancer and singer and who's not. Yeah. And Bill's OK, and Tim's OK, yeah. and Graham's just a bit embarrassed. <laughs> that would be me, though. Yes. <laughs> it's that science thing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, right, 1975. Just like the goodies, Mike Bat's Wombles strutted their stuff on Blue Peter several times during their 1970s heyday. Uh, number six, David Cassidy pre-recorded his appearance in which he helped to judge Blue Peter's Keep Britain Tidy poster competition. Mm -hmm. So there's the Wombles. Uh, and there's David Cassidy. Mm -hmm. Now what's David Cassidy known for? 
Uh, we did in the Partridge family. Oh, right. Okay. And he was a teen heartthrob. It, okay. was, it was him again. Well, you either liked him or you liked the Osmonds. Right. You weren't really allowed to like both of them. I think the Osmonds were the, sort of the clean cut group that all the sort of mums approved of. Yeah. And David Cassidy was perhaps not. Okay. Didn't, didn't really have any of his stuff. But I did no. have a couple of Wombles. Albums. Um, yeah. Singles and albums. Yeah. Did you have any? Uh not Wombles ones, no. no. No, I don't think so. Were they, were they a bit early for you? Possibly, yeah. 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 By the time I would have been sort of old enough to not collect records, but to get sort of records. Well, Paul as likes presents. the Wombles, he does, doesn't he? Yeah. yeah. And he's younger than me, but I just, yeah, I never really had any Wombles stuff. Okay. Uh, next page. ABBA visit the studio for a chat, a mark of their status as the 1970s were an era when pop guests were unusual on Blue Peter. And second one. This is the first of two appearances made by Kenneth Williams to promote Willow the Wisp, for which he oh, provided right. all, the, all voices. the voices. Yeah. So there's, yeah. there's Abba, there's Kenneth Williams, mm -hmm. with uh, Eve Wedner by the look of it. <laughs> Although Sarah Green. <laughs> Sarah Green, yeah. Yeah, Sarah Green was Kenneth Williams. Yeah, Sarah Green was Kenneth Williams. And there's yes. Arthur the Caterpillar, and oh, there's Mavis, Mavis Crewe at the Crewe fairy. The fairy, the fat fairy. So again, yes. Abba. No, it's before my time. Yeah, yeah. Before again, I was old enough to really. Again, um, I, I think I have an ABBA album mm -hmm. somewhere. Excuse me, I'm just going to lean out a camera because Rose wants to go out the door. Is the, is the cat incapable of opening the door again? Yes. There you okay. go, Rose. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, but Willow the Wisp. Oh, I love Willow the Wisp. Yeah. 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 Because he writes about it in his diary. Yes. And he, he's. He quite likes working on Well, that. that's because yeah. it's just him. Yeah. It's <laughs> so him he, doing he all can the do voices. What he likes. Yeah, he can do what he likes. It's just him being the star. Yeah, Willow the Wisp's great. Yeah. Okay, picture number three. Uh, writers Jimmy Perry and David Croft created a special script so that John LeMessurier and Arthur Lowe could appear in character as Wilson and Manring to inspect a Dad's Army collage sent in by viewers. Oh, yeah, it's We've like a Dad's that. Army... Yes, it's like a Dad's Army Bayo tapestry, isn't it, yeah. kind of thing. It's, it's this long sort of... Well, it's not even a tapestry, it's just pictures, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But that's on one of the Dad's Army discs. Yes, yes, yes. That, that, that's, a that's very... really good, because they are doing it in character. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's like... A, it's a really weird thing to see... Um, Mannering and Wilson in a sort of modern day setting but still in their uniforms. Mm -hmm. uh, another Blue Peter, Peter coup securing the fork and spoon bending sensation oh, Yuri, Yuri Geller, Geller for his yeah. first major British TV appearance. Okay. As a scientist I have very little to say about that. Yeah. But there's the picture. There's the Pete's got his long hair there. There's the flared. dad's army. And there's Yuri Geller doing of his bending. Apparently. Apparently. Uh, 1983 Elton John appeared with his verdict on Peter Duncan's single Cold as Ice, <laughs> Elton was complimentary, but the record wasn't a hit. Oh. Do, you, do you even know what that was? No. No. <laughs> uh, veteran British comedian Arthur Askey oh, wow. played Baron Harder oh, in the pantomime. In the very first Blue Peter pantomime, okay. Cinderella. Oh, God, is that John? Is that. Peter Poe's in Note for It's 1973. It's the yeah. Ugly Sisters. Yeah, I've never and seen that. Val. Is it Val and yeah, Leslie? Yes, Val. Yeah, Val and Leslie and then the boys. Yeah, look yeah. at that. And Arthur Askey as Baron Harder. Wow. And there's a... Do you think many children knew who Arthur Askey was at that point? Uh, I don't really know, but... Yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. 1973. I yeah. mean, virtually nobody knows who he is now. OK, so. and there's a few more modern ones. Mm -hmm. uh, so I won't spend too much on... On these, well, there is much. one you should show, which is on the next it, page. I is think. there? All yeah. oh, right, okay. Uh, Bob Geldof. Uh huh. That's for the that's for Live Aid, I guess. Uh, Outstanding Endeavour Award. Yeah. Uh, so around the t it's around the time of Live Aid, by the looks of it. Yeah, eighty five. Yeah. Uh, Pele. Uh -huh. Um, what have we got? Uh, Kevin Keegan. Okay. And uh, Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher. Okay. And who, who's in that one? Uh, where are we? What's that? Um, what, it's next what? to Pele. Yeah, that that's Mark Hamill and oh, Carrie Mark Fisher. Oh, Mark Hamill Fisher and Yeah, yeah, 1980. Okay. Uh, Dawn French All right. um, appeared as Bunty, a character she played in Murder oh, Most Horrid. Yeah. I don't know how you got away with that because <laughs> yes, because that's 
I'd like to see that one again. That's she's a TV children's TV presenter, and I think she ends up killing somebody by putting pastel Paris over their face <laughs> with, without any air holes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Ewan McGregor mm -hmm. and David Beckham. Okay. There you are. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you know. And um, yes, the re <laughs> you can tell Richard's written this book, yes. can't you? Mm -hmm. uh, the relationship between Doctor Who. He's put Dr. Who. Richard, Richard, don't it put... It's on space. How can, like, saving four letters save oh, space? It, stop my mind. Just the, re, the relationship be, between Drew Who and Blue Peter has endured. David Tennant helped to judge the phenomenally successful designer monster competition, which had 43,920 entries. Mm -hmm. The winner was nine-year-old William Grantham, whose absorber loft subsequently appeared in the story Love and Monsters. Mm -hmm. I just come back this way because you disappeared me off camera. Am I falling off the yes. camera? All right, okay. Yeah. Um, J.K. Rowling mm -hmm. with the gold blue Peter badge mm -hmm. and Catherine Tay ad libbing her way as Lauren the teenager. Yeah, teenager. Am I bothered? But yes, I remember watching the design. Yeah, we monster watched the design monster one, and because cause didn't um, there was a football monster. Yeah, there was a football monster, but RTD was really naughty and was tempted to say Sad Tony, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. Because it would have been very difficult to do, or the football monster. Whichever one was the one that was going to be the most difficult to do. Yeah. And it, it, I think he, it, Phil Collinson was like shouting, Don't pick yeah. Sad Tony! Because didn't <laughs> Russell say he entered it? In yeah, he six, entered the, the 1960s. What, 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 some taps or something? Yeah, something like that, yeah. <laughs> Mon yeah. Monster made out of his, yeah. like, taps. The one that, um, that's... The Patrick Troughton is that the one? judged, oh, right, okay. but there's no footage of that, is there? It's no. just a picture of him and, and, no. and the presenter. But yeah, I, I, just, I just like that range of people yeah. that have been it's involved. It's amazing how you get on with, there. With Blue yeah. Peter, you know. Because, um, yeah, the, I mean, we're coming up to sort of uh, November fairly soon. Mm -hmm. And I do remember, because this is around the sort of period I think you'd have your Blue Peter totaliser. Yeah. And then, of course, there's the advent crown, all yeah. all all of that stuff. Yes. And yeah, I, I certainly remember. Um, I do associate Blue Peter with this time of year. It's weird mm -hmm. in that because yeah, you you you'd have you'd tune in every week to see whether the yeah. totaliser had gone up another notch. Because I said to you, I remember when I was at senior school, and I don't think it was the first year I was at senior school, which was 1993. I think it was the second year. Yeah. Um, I think it was around the time of the famine in Ethiopia, because that's about 1994, isn't it? Yeah. And I think they, they did bring and buy sales for, for the Ethiopian famine, and we did one at my school, and I can vaguely remember where they held it and looking at the tables. It's weird. I've just got this image of, of the foyer of my school, which you didn't go in. Right. You went in. When you joined the school, you went in through the front door. After that point, you never went in through <laughs> the front door. You weren't allowed in. No, right, okay. you went through the... Uh, the back door, excuse me. <clears throat> but you had to go through there to get to the lunch, the, you know, the canteen. The yeah. Lunch but that's where they held the bring and buy sale in this little foyer area. Oh, okay. And I remember, I think I manned this one of the stalls for a bit. It's okay. a long time ago, so... I, I mean, this might be a false memory, but I vaguely remember, like, sending in stamps and things like that, you know, mm. cutting them, you know, mm. off, all, off all your... Letters. And you had to leave a certain amount yeah. around them. Because yeah, the great thing about Blue Peter is they never ask for money. No. Because they the idea was that's that, one of the chapters yeah, in here. The idea was that there might be children watching at home that didn't have much money, but they might have uh, tin foil or stamps or you know milk bottle tops. So and they could send those in. Yeah. You know it's 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 a great idea. It because in, it includes everybody. Yeah, here so. we are. Yeah, special assignment. We never ask for money. Yes. Uh, so yeah, there's there's some pictures of mm. the various designs of total. That, that, that was a very that's a very seventies picture. That is a very seventies picture. It's a very colourful total. You better show that. Picture. Yeah, I better show that. It's a that's, good one. that's yeah. That's that's a colour TV picture. That's put as many colours in as possible. Yeah, there we are. There's, yeah. there's rather good. Because <laughs> we no we noticed that when we started watching. Um, episodes of things that have been previously in black and white yeah. and when they go into colour it's getting off the subject um there's a lot of colour isn't there which one is so. that that's two um treasure hunt oh. so when when's that going to be 1972 by the look of it yes oh 225 tons of old metal treasure buying mm. two centers for the elderly eight hot dinner vans and holidays each spring and autumn for a hundred elderly people. Mm. Yeah. I like this one, that one, the one of Simon Groom jumping, because the dogs 
which is um, Goldie, presumably. Wild, He's just it? looking at him going, what are you doing? The 1983 weather beater appeal, jumping for joy. Yeah. Well, do you want to see him jumping yeah. for joy then? It's just, yeah. the, it's just the way the dog's <laughs> looking at him going, what are you doing? There's some jumping. Mm. Get me hand out of the way. Yeah. And we should say about the pets as well. What yeah. pets do you remember? Well, I, I think certainly... Petra or...? I just about remember Petra, but I remember sort of Shep. Oh, see, I love the clip of when John Nugs is given Shep. Mm. Because he's adorable. He's just all small. Not John Nugs. I mean, John Nugs <laughs> was adorable. But Shep's all small and, and sweet and licky and, and, and bitey. Yeah. And he's really lovely. I kind of remember Jack and Jill, I think. Yes, I remember of, them, yeah. You know, early 80s, isn't it? Yeah, because they were the ones that wouldn't sit still. They would not sit still. In fact, the only person that ever managed to get Jack, is it Jack I think, I think yes, yeah, is Colin, Colin Baker. Yeah. And I think there might be a certain element of holding him down. Yeah, I was going to say, he's keeping a firm grip on yeah. him in the, in the clips. So, yeah. But because it, I think that's, they thought that was a good idea because obviously Colin's doctor is the mm. cat that walks alone and he's yeah. got the cat badge on his, on his um, jacket. But yeah, I mean, I, I didn't watch regularly after, I think we got to the mid-80s and yeah. I certainly never saw sort of much of Mark Curry or Karen Keating no. or Yvette Fielding. And that's not to take it away from them. I just By that point, I'd got to the point where I wasn't really watching it anymore. Yeah. But, uh, but I, I certainly, even when they're like, there was a Doctor Who bit. Oh, on yeah, there, we always I'd watch always it if there's a Doctor Who bit. Tune in, yeah, yeah that's, that's, the, that's the thing. So, yeah, I remember like Trial of a Time Lord Sylvester mm. uh, being sort of introduced on there in, in mm-hmm. 87. And certainly, you know, with the, with the new you know, version of Doctor Who, I remember mm-hmm. like. So certainly, if there was like the sort of the monster, the monster competition yeah. or or Chris Eccleston or something being yeah. on there, and yeah. and yeah, we'd always uh, find an excuse to watch Blue Peter yeah. then, wouldn't yeah. we? Yeah. But, you know, but we thing. don't really need an excuse. You'd never need an excuse to watch Blue Peter, no. although now obviously it is much not aimed at our age because we're far too old. <laughs> um, you know, you watch it and you sort of think, oh. You know, they're still doing it. Yeah. And they've gone back now to the core thing of two presenters. Yeah. They've only got the two presenters. So it's it's gone almost back full circle now, like it was yeah, with yeah. Christopher Trace and... Um, I can't remember what her name is. Leila Williams. Leila Williams, yes, sorry. Um, she was on there as well. But, yeah, so you've just got the two presenters yeah. now. Yeah. Right. And I think the, 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 um, the female presenter, whose name I... Don't know who. Don't remember? <laughs> I think she won a competition to get the get the job. Yeah, yeah. She launched a competition for Blue Peter presenter, and she she Lindsay. Yeah. Yeah. She was the one that won it. I yeah, think. Right. So I didn't know that. It's you know. Oh, well. well, let's say happy birthday to Blue Peter. Happy again. birthday, Blue Peter. Let's mm-hmm. hit, here's to another sixty years. Yes. Okay. All right. We'll say good night then. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.